Hi guys, I spent all of today trying not to puke again, singing go so So I didn't really vlog. So today I made a promise to my friend that I would do something and now I'm going to do it. And hopefully I can make it under 10 minutes. So um, I promised my friend that I would read her poetry. And I'm going to record myself doing it so that I can do it digitally. So uh, cool cool. First poem is O oh Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. O oh Captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But O oh heart, 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 o'er the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. O oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills. Ten for you bouquets and ribboned wreaths, for you the shores are crowding. For you they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Dear captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on that desk you fall in cold and dead. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my army, has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip, from fearful trip, the victor ship comes in with object one. Twenty exult, O shores, and ring, O bells, but I with mournful tread, mournful tread, walk on the deck, my captain lies, fallen, cold and dead. Fallen, cold and dead. There's We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We wear the mask that grins and lies, it hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. It's debt we pay to human guile, with torn and bleeding hearts we smile, and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but oh great Christ, our cries, to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh the clay is vile beneath our feet, and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise, we wear the mask. Then there is I Am by John Clare. I am, yet what I am, none cares or knows. My friends forsake me like a memory lost. I am the self-consumer of my woes. They rise and vanish in oblivious host, like shades in love and death's oblivion lost. And yet I am, and live with shadows tossed, into the nothingness of scorn and noise, into the living sea of waking dreams, where there is neither sense of life nor joys, but the vast shipwreck shipwreck of my life's esteems, and e'en the dearest that I love the best are strange, nay, stranger than the rest. I long for scenes where man is never trod, a place where woman never smiled or wept, there to abide with my creator God, and sleep as I in childhood sweetly slept, untroubling and untroubled where I lie, the grass below, above the vaulted sky. And it's gonna take me a second. That is Deanna messaging me. Okay. This is Invictus by William Ernst Henley. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced or cried or nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Nothing Gold Can Stay by Robert Frost Nature's first green is gold, her heart is hued to hold, her early leaf's a flower, but only so for an hour, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief, so dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. <sighs> to the Virgins to Make Much of Time by Robert Herrick. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, old time is still a-flying, and this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow, will be dying. The glorious lamp of heaven, the sun, the higher he's a-getting, the sooner will his race be run, and nearer he's to setting. That age is best, which is the first, when youth and blood are warmer, but being spent, the worst 
the worst the worst, time still succeeds the former. Then be not coy, but use your time, and while ye may go marry, for having lost but once your prime, you may forever tarry. can't actually find an author or a title for this, but I know Deanna's going to like it, so. In the story of Patroclus, no one survives, not even Achilles, who was nearly a god. Patroclus resembled him. They wore the same armor. Always in these friendships, one serves the other. One is less than the other. The hierarchy is always apparent, though the legends cannot be trusted. Their source is the survivor, the one who has been abandoned. What were the Greek ships on fire compared to this loss? In his tent, Achilles grieved with his whole being, and the gods saw he was a man already dead, a victim of the part that loved, the part that was mortal. Um, this one's called Regret. I can't find out who wrote it, but it's from angelfire.com, so that'll probably help you a little bit in your search. I'm sorry. I saw the young men marching, saw them pass me in the street. I heard their cries for freedom, heard the, dr heard the drums hold out its beat. They cried for us to join them, and I marched beside a while. I saw their leader, Golden Man. I saw their hopeless smiles. I marched there with them just a while, till fear began to grow. I knew what they were doing, and I wondered, did they know? That bravery is not a match for Gend Gendarm's cool guns. That their struggle for a bright new world would end ere it begun. I left the young men marching, let them pass me in the street. Their bravery and my own dark fears forced me into retreat. I could not stand there with them. They were better men than I, and daybreak found them cold and dead when sunlight lit the sky. I remember young men marching. How could I ever forget? The cowardice that drove me fills me each day with such regret. They died all but forgotten by the people they fought for. It's still... Yet, though I shall live far longer, these brave men were far more. This is pretty good. Um, this is another one. I don't even know what the name of this one is, but it's also from angelfire.com. And these past two, this, the one before and this one are about layman's, by the way. Just let it clear that up. If we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot, where round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed. In vain, even though the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us, show, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we'll face the murderous cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying but fighting back. Uh, here's another one. Uh, I can see that this one is written by Claude McKay. I think it's called The Street, but I, I cut it off in the screenshot before I could fully tell. Um, Along in silent street I walk in blackness, and I stumble and fall and rise. And I walk blind, my feet stepping on silent stones and dry leaves. Everything dark and doorless, turning and turning among these corners which lead forever to the street, where nobody waits for, nobody follows me, where I pursue a man who stumbles and rises and says when he sees me, nobody. This one's called Persephone. It's by Walter Wykes. I'm going to tilt this a bit so that I can lean in a bit because this one has smaller print. Your laughter echoes still in that bright field where you played, so carefree, little goddess, little goddess, arms white as milk, gathering flowers with your playmates when the earth shook, and through the crumbling ground your monstrous lover burst, an uninvited guest, snatching you away, plucking your innocence as you had plucked flowers only a moment before. How you must have cried out, must have begged for your release. When your mother learned of the adopt abduction, her grief stopped the earth, the moon, the stars in their tracks. The world became eternal winter. There was no consolation, no solace. We're moving on. What an unexpected miracle when you return to us, a gift from the gods. But you are not the same, no longer that bright child, a handful of seeds. A handful of seeds has sealed your fate. 
and though all things flourish in your presence, your laughter is colored by that other place, that dark lover, and in your eyes cold winter rains. This is called Siren Song by Margaret Atwood. This is the one song everyone would like to learn, the song that is irresistible. The song that forces men to leap overboard in squadrons even though they see beached skulls. The song nobody knows because anybody who's ever heard it is dead and the others can't remember. Shall I tell you the secret? And if I do, will you get me out of this bird suit? I don't enjoy it here, squatting on this island, looking picturesque picturesque and mythical with these two feathery maniacs. I don't enjoy singing in this trio, fatal and valuable. I will tell the secret to you, to you, only to you. Come closer. The song is a cry for help. Help me. Only you can. Only you can. You are unique. At last. Alas, it is a boring song, but it works every time. This one is called The More Loving One. It's by W. H. Auden. Looking up at the stars, I know quite well that, for all they care, I can go to hell. But on earth, indifference is the least we have to dread from man or beast. How should we like it were stars to burn with a passion for us we could not return? If equal affection cannot be, let the more loving one be me. Admirer, as I think I am, of stars that do not give a damn, I cannot, now I see them, say, I missed one terribly all day. Were all stars to disappear or die, I should learn to look at an empty sky, and though it fe and feel its total dark sublime, though this might take me a little time. Um, this is called I Do Not Love Thee by Caroline Elizabeth Sarah Norton. I do not love thee. I'm going to try that again. I mean, I've been messing up, but like the first line, really. Okay. I do not love thee. No, I do not love thee. And yet, when thou art absent, I am sad, and envy even the bright blue sky above thee, whose quiet stars may see thee and be glad. I do not love thee. Yet, I know not why. Whatever thou dost seems still well done to me. And often in my solitude I sigh that those I do love are not more like thee. I do not love thee, yet when thou art gone I hate the sound, though those who speak be dear, which breaks the lingering echo of the tone thy voice of music leaves upon my ear. I do not love thee, yet thy speaking eyes with their deep, bright, and most expressive blue between me and the midnight heaven arise, oftener than the eyes I ever knew, oftener than any eyes I ever knew. I know I do not love thee, yet, alas, others will scarcely trust my candid heart, and oft I catch them smiling as they pass, because they see me gazing where thou art. Where thou art. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> you guys have a good night, day, whenever you watch this. I will see you guys tomorrow.